In the last video, we saw how with a switch, perhaps a MOSFET, and a flyback diode, we could use a digital output from a microcontroller to turn a motor on and off. But we want to do more than just turn the motor on and off. We want to be able to control its speed. Uh, we want a variable output speed. So the question is, how do we do that with a digital output? And the answer is that we use pulse width modulation. So even though we don't have any analog output from the microcontroller, we are able to control the duty cycle of a pulse width modulation signal and basically close the switch and open it rapidly and therefore essentially get an averaged effect of the voltage across the motor. So as an example, if we have a pulse width modulation output that looks like this, then the switch is closed most of the time, so we're getting something almost like full power to the motor. On the other hand, if we have something like this, then the switch is off, off most of the time, and we're getting something closer to the motor being off. And based on changing the duty cycle of the PWM, we can essentially achieve an average voltage across the motor between the plus, plus V, whatever that is, and zero volts across the motor based on the duration of the duty cycle. So the PWM duty cycle, or frequency, sorry, is defined as 1 over T here. And the frequency is typically uh, in the range of 10 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz or so. You can have higher and lower pulse width modulation frequencies. The danger with using too low of a pulse width modulation frequency, so for, for example, so, say you chose one hertz, then the motor is actually going to speed up and slow down during each one of these cycles, so you're not going to get a good averaging effect. And if your pulse width modulation frequency is too high, then this switch may not have a time to open and close fully uh, during each of the uh, each of the uh, each of the waveforms. So for high frequencies, you need a high or a high uh, speed switch, and you also need here for the flyback diode, you need it to be able to handle a lot of current, and you also need it to be fast switching too. So not just any diode will work here; it needs to be something capable of handling high current and be capable of switching quickly. So now we have the capability to control the motor. Uh, to basically have any voltage between plus V and zero. Uh, so that allows us variable speeds in one direction of the motor. So what we need to do now is get bidirectional motion so we can make the motor spin both ways. And that's the H-bridge, and that's something we'll talk about next. <laughs>